So let's look at page 89 to the problems. Hopefully, uh, I see Nick. You just got a cup of coffee? Yeah, with a GCAT. A GCAT? Gotta go for the high test. All right. Uh, I will say, for those who are new to Rutgers, um, you are not going to get, you know, Epicurean uh, high couture food downstairs, but uh, the coffee is actually very good Starbucks coffee in Starbucks. And they have, you know, the light blend, the medium blend, and the dark roast. So uh, let me give a shout out there. Uh, and there's other, you know, generic yogurts and other things. So hopefully if you come directly from work and you need a, a quick fix, uh, you'll, you'll find some, you know, sub sustenance downstairs, right? All right, question uh, one. Father leaves daughter $20,000 in his will. Taxable or not taxable uh, in this case? Evelina, taxable? Uh, James, see if you agree. Yeah. Evelina, page 89, taxable or not? Yeah. James, agreed? Yeah. Okay. What's your authority, James? Why don't you add? Father dies intestate. Daughter receives twenty thousand dollars worth of real estate as his heir. Ari, Jesse, tax or not? Yeah. Let me get Ari and then Jesse. See if you agree. Um, Question B. I'm sorry. Uh, Jesse. Yes. Guess what? Tax or not? Why? Because she's receiving the money for being here. She's receiving, so it's not tax, it is taxable, you're saying, under 61? Yes. Raphael, you agree? Yes. Uh, All right, you can't say yes under 102. Taxable or not? Not taxable. What's your authority? So, Johanny, who's right? Taxable or not taxable? You're saying it's taxable. Why? Because it's, it's not in the will. Doesn't matter. Intestate means you're just getting it without the will. Does it have to be because of a will? No. no. Life be hoey. It doesn't matter how you get it. Is it if it's as a result of death, not taxable. One or two A. Jesse, right? What? Is it section one or two? One or two A. Not taxable. Question A says someone dies with a will, not taxable. Someone dies without a will, you get twenty thousand. Not taxable. Question B or C: Father leaves several members of the family out of his will. Uh, the daughters and others attack the will. As a result of the settlement, twenty thousand dollars. Brandon, Stephanie, taxable or not? Uh, not. Not Stephanie. Great. You say it's taxable. Alicia, who's right? I say not taxable. Why? Because um, um, if you got it outside of the will, then it's, it's still a uh, state. Well, what's your authority? One or two. Is that the best you can do, Edward? Mm -hmm. It's not taxable. Do you have authority? Um, yeah. Section 102. do you have better authority? Jay, do you have better authority? Huh? What? I said it was taxable. You said it's taxable. I don't think it falls under the section one or two. Takashi? What? Luca. Can you set the Supreme Court case? Life be hoey. Isn't this the same fact pattern as life be hoey? Stephanie, what's the difference between this one sentence and the life be hoey case? Right. And if you told your supervisor or client this was taxable, and they came across the Life Be Hoey case, it would not be a good day in the office, right? I've had those days, Stephanie. You want to keep them to a minimum, right? <laughs> Non-taxable, right? Because on a good, if a day like that happens, if you're lucky, you just cry with the, with the door closed. If it's a really bad day, you get sued, all right? So. 
those, you, want, you don't want it too many of those days to hear. Why would this be considered punitive damages? Where do you see the punitiveness? And, and what do you mean by that? They're getting an award because they brought a lawsuit and they're settling it. Don't, don't, don't mischaracterize it. Punitive damages if someone did something wrong. There's nothing, no one said any, anyone perpetuating their wrong here. Are we going to lose points for citing like a yes. source? Yes. I mean, if you cite the wrong source, that doesn't count. So it's one of two sections. Is it technically wrong here? The better site would be the Life Be Hope, right? Coupled with 102A. What a winning combination, right? <laughs> Agree? I mean, doesn't that end the discussion? Say it's tax rate. And again, if you told your client, you told your supervisor it was taxable, I can promise you there will probably be pretty significant consequences. And I'm not saying that. Well, I'm trying to say again, people who know, and most of you do, when you practice tax, you do not practice, you know, with the code in one hand and a glass of wine in the other, right? You need a glass, well, you need the code in one hand and, you know, three espressos in the other hand, right? Um, you need your full attention. You cannot be texting. You cannot, you know, have your brain somewhere else. It is a very... Uh, uh, jealous mistress, right? The code, uh, and you better pay close attention because if you don't, um, you will not survive. Um, father leaves daughter twenty thousand dollars in his will, stating that the amount is in appreciation of the daughter, daughter's long and devoted service to him. In that case, uh, West tax or not, and Larry C. If you agree. Uh, Not taxable. Not taxable. What, what would be your authority? Larry, see if you agree? 102A. Larry, agree or disagree? I think it's taxable. It's wow, we have big differences of opinion here. <laughs> Mike, who's right? Not taxable. What's your authority? 102A. And Nikisha, you were going to say? I think it's taxable, section 61, Wolner versus. Water be commissioner had a spin to it. That was definitely for services rendered. Compare this with the next part, right? Um, look at problem E. Father leaves daughter $20,000 pursuant to a written agreement under which daughter agreed to care for father in his declining years. Tax or not, Nikisha? Taxable. What's your authority? Um, 61. All right, everyone agree? No one's this great, right? And, and so your answer, Question E is definitely taxable. In contrast, question D, could this just be some lawyer with flowery language? Or, you know, someone says, gee, I really love my daughter. She was really devoted to me. Um, you know, is it really a quid pro quo for services rendered? Unless it says, or it's understood that the daughter changed the dad's bedpan for the last 10 years, and he really didn't mean to compensate her. Nikisha, I'm not saying you're wrong, but I really would like to know more. And if this is just some, excuse my language, get a little punchy, uh, BS language that the lawyer threw in, would we just say not taxable? Yes, you would say non taxable, right? So my gut says non taxable unless there's some extenuating circumstances. Joan? What if my father, against my will, lives with me and I have to care for this one? I need, <laughs> I need, you know, I need to use the inheritance. Certainly, obviously, now you're painting a more likely scenario where it would be taxable, right? Would because be. he's doing as a quid pro quo for you taking him into the house and caring for him. Well, I, I just did because he's my father, not really because of a business. But did he leave you 20000 more compared to your siblings? Well, All of a sudden, well, it has a stronger aroma of being compensatory. Right, so we have to weigh all that. I'm just saying, in the absence of knowing more fact, facts here, notice the distinction between the two problems. One is definitely taxable, one is probably not in the absence of knowing more facts. Can I, can I do a follow-up question? There's usually the agreement, there's usually like, uh, you, know, you hear a lot of times where there's a family member that takes care of the <coughs> elderly parent, and because of that, that family member is entitled to leave in the house 
and staying with them in the house after the person dies. And they stay, and there's usually like, oh, I want my car, I need to move out of the house and sell the house. Is that, is that, is the fact that the person is living in the house taxable? Is your question, is someone now dies, and they take the other person's car, stays in the house, right? I get it all the time. And the reality is, who's the, if I'm the executor of the estate, I'm gonna try to get, it depends. Do I wanna keep a relationship with my sibling who's still in the house or not? Right? And this is really not a tax question because the IRS is not gonna really dig too deeply here, right? As a practical matter, I'm just speaking from experience. And the reality is, if you wanna keep the relationship, you're gonna gently push your sibling out and say, look, take six months, try to find an alternative living, and then inevitably it takes a year or two to get rid of your sibling. But if you want to push hard, you can go to court and get them removed if you're the executor. It's an asset in the estate. Right? But that's not an issue, a tax issue. All right? Uh, questions? I saw some hands up regarding this. So uh, the best authority for, for D would be section 102. 102A, uh -huh. non taxable question E, uh, code section 61. Also? Uh, could you give us an example of quantum merit? All right, can we get to the end and we'll get to it? Okay, because you're raising something that comes up towards the end. Um, question F. Um, same as any above, except father died without a will, and daughter is successfully enforced a $20,000 claim as an agreement against the estate. In that particular case, Lou, tax poll or not, and Nick, see if you agree. Um, it would be tax poll or not tax poll. Lou, what is it? It's not tax poll, you said section 60. Nick, you agree or not? Yes, agree. Okay, tax poll, right? She's suing for services rendered. Question G. Same as F, except the daughter settles a $20,000 claim for $10,000. Jeff, Jackie, taxable or not? Taxable. Tax. Tax. Jackie, what's your authority? Uh, section 61. Code section 61, right? Right. Father, question H. Father appointed daughter as the executrix of his estate, and father's will provided daughter was to receive $20,000 for her services as executrix. In this case, Diana, Busto, taxable or not? Taxable, Diana. Good taxable. Okay, now, compare that with question I. Father appointed daughter executrix of his estate and made a $20,000 request to her in lieu of all commissions, uh, compensation or commissions to which she would otherwise um, be entitled to receive this executrix. All right, now, I'm only drawing your contrast to question H and I because Sometimes, mo let me just start with this. Most times, children will, what I'll call, waive the right to commissions. Okay? Most times that I've dealt with the states, uh, the children will waive their rights to whatever commissions that they're entitled to. Uh, and they just do it because they don't want to rock, rock the boat with their siblings or whatnot. And from an income tax perspective, um, it's usually better because if you take commissions, it's subject to income tax. And if you get an inheritance, right, if you get the same money as an inheritance, 102A shelters it, right? So most children, for one reason or another, waive the right to commission. Agree? Agree. That's, just, that's my world. <laughs> <laughs> Say again, Nick? I was just repeating what you were saying on your term. Yes, you all agree. You were giving us our, your answer. I was giving you, but, but you can fight against me. I don't, you know, like, no problem. I, I enjoy that kind of give and take. Um, so the, the point I'm making is that where the will, where the, where the will provides sort of received 20,000 for services rendered, that has a Roma being taxed under Code Section 61. Where the daughter, in question I, where the father appoints daughter as executrix and made a $20,000 request to her and said, well, it's in lieu of commissions, but there was no saying that the daughter was actually going to get commissions or want commissions, then it's probably less likely to be subject to tax, and you can invoke Code Section 102A. Now, is this definitive? Not definitive, okay? This is a kind of gray area. But in most cases, um, 
anything packaged, this is not the Walter case, right? This is not someone uh, truly trying to circumvent their income tax obligations. Um, I'm, I'm just pointing out, so for your notes, question H probably would be $20,000 taxable income. Um, in contrast, problem I probably would not. Let's look at question two. Boyfriend who has a quote unquote mental problem with marriage agrees with the taxpayer that he will leave her quote unquote everything at his death in return for her staying with him without marriage. Sound familiar? <laughs> she does, he doesn't, and she sues his estate. He paid a price for his, uh, his uh, um, whatever, shenanigans. And the theory of quantum merit and settles her claim, uh, let's say for $100,000. Is her settlement excludable under code section 102? Uh, John and Katia, taxable or not? I think it's taxable. Katia, agree or disagree? I think it's taxable too. And Jay, agree or disagree? I'm not sure, no. Because your question is probably, or maybe you can, let me, what is the word quantum narrow means? Because I, I think, uh, plus, oh, you, you raised that. What is, do you know what quantum narrow means? No. Yolanda, do you know? No. Did they Google that? Yes. Is that the amount of time they work together? So it's considered. It's not the time. What does quantum narrow mean? Everyone's taking out their cell phones. Yeah, like cost service. Cost of error would be for services rendered. She said suing him under the theory um, she rendered services to him and should be compensated accordingly. David, don't ask me what services she rendered. <laughs> <laughs> What's your question, David? I was going to say, this sounds like a legal service that she's trying to claim this under. Well, let's leave it G-rated and say she did the dishes, uh, she did the car clean, whatever the case may be, okay? And she's suing under that theory, okay? Uh, Jesse, taxable or not? Taxable. Okay, why? Because they're not legally married. Okay, so what would you cite? Nick? Um, we could say that maybe that uh, it is taxable because the money was left to her for the services and not given to her. Well, she's suing on the basis of rendering services, which has all the aroma of Code Section 61, right? Yes. Therefore, seems she live by the sword, die by the sword, if she's making a claim under Code Section 61 or her services rendered, she should be subject to tax, right? She's not, this is not like the Hoey case, right? Right, Stephanie, this is not at all similar. This is not, I was entitled to a request or a portion of the estate. It was like, I should be paid for my services. Ashley? If, say, that whole service, services part wasn't in this, would it play a factor that they're not it was just, you know, somebody's girlfriend, they were together for 10 years, there's nobody else in the picture, and this guy dies. Okay, but then if you're getting, let's say, your boyfriend. Yeah, my boyfriend. And you die. And your boyfriend says, gee, Ashley was really nice. She said I was going to get $100,000, and you leave him zero. Yeah. Can you make a claim against your estate? Okay. So that's probably not a good idea for him to bring a claim. Okay, so you don't want to There is no common law marriage in Jersey. Oh, no common There is no common law marriage in Jersey. Okay. Uh, so what about the fact that he has a mental problem and he was incapacitated? Well, even if he was in incapacitated, remember, a girlfriend or a boyfriend doesn't have a right to your. Even if you say the will is invalid under the intestacy laws, the girlfriend or boyfriend has zero rights. It doesn't matter. So you're not going to be able to claim a lack of testamentary intent. So that's not going to get you very far. Well, he didn't die. He didn't die anyway. So he left her, right? Oh, it says he's a state. Last I checked, Nick. <laughs> last, last year. Yeah, I mean, wait a second. Did he die wrong? I thought he didn't. She did. I don't know. He didn't leave her. She's yeah, but notice. She sues his estate. Okay, right. 
Notice Nick, he paid the ultimate price. <laughs> if Waldorf case arose today, would 102C apply to resolve the issue? Now I get to ask Jessica uh, and uh, Diana. Jessica, tax or not, or would this, would 102C apply in the context of the Warbur decision? Is that a yes or no? Would 102C apply? So. You don't think so. And Diana, would she be right? And Jessica, if you say so, why not? In the Walder case, it's that he's trying to circumvent the tax obligation, right? So would 102C help in this context? Luke, you're saying it would? Yeah. yeah. It would help result. Because 102C would knock out 102A. Mm -hmm. Diana, would you agree? Jessica, would you agree? Not yet. I'm not sure. Anna, would you agree? Matt? I'm not sure. Wasn't Section 61 already like, implemented? Right. That's a different question. 102C is relatively new. Would 102C help resolve the Woodward case? Yes. Lisa, you're shaking vigorously. Definitely. Definitely? Yes. Does it trouble you there is no employer-employee relationship in the Water decision? Isn't the, the lawyer that was doing the will? When, when, you're, when I'm a client of yours and I hire you, Alicia, to be my accountant, are you my employee? And I hire you to no, do. No, no, you're right. What are what are you to me? Just you're an I independent contract. Does 102C apply in that relationship? Don't look too hard. It doesn't. It doesn't. Right, Jessica. 102C only applies in the employment context, right? Brandon, does it have any application here? No. Zero application. Right, Dana. So be careful about the word definitely, Alicia. You could have that bad day in the office where you close the door and there's not enough Kleenexes around. So it must be an employee. It means that they pay your taxes and so on. All the other. One or C's, it, the scope of it, right, is limited to an employment relationship, employer-employee. Does not apply to independent contractors, right? You guys ready to move on to chapter four? Make a lot of progress tonight. Aaron. It, it, it's statutorily said it depends on the size of the estate, Karen. Okay, so the larger the estate, it's, it's the five percent on the first two hundred thousand, and it's four percent on the next. Uh, and it's sliding down. The larger the, the estate, the smaller each percentage. But it really depends on the size of the estate. Chapter 4 is entitled Employee Benefits. And here the authors are giving us one more example. We just saw our code section 102. Now we're getting a glimpse of a different code section. Let's start off with something fundamental. Um, are fringe benefits taxable or not? In general, if a client asks you about fringe benefits, Cotty, you're shaking your head. Yes or no? Is that your starting point? Well, it's your starting point, Jack. That way you want to say not taxable. You guys have your own philosophy out of practice. Um, I'd like to start with the philosophy of like, and, and maybe because as, as a, 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 in high school and college, I, I can never be the student athlete because I was always the last one picked and all that. So I always yearn to be that hero that I couldn't be. So I much prefer to start off telling people and my clients, you know, Look at Regulation 61-21. Starts off with the proposition that what? All 
accretions to wealth are taxable, including fringe benefits. So, Katya, you want to start off where you tell your client all fringe benefits are taxable. Now, here's where the heroism comes in. Now you can say to your client, but I will examine Code Section 132 because there may be an exception that applies in your case where it would not be subject to tax. So you want to set client expectations, right? If you start off, Katia, saying, ah, don't worry, French benefits are, are exempt from tax, and then your client talks to you and you, you all of a sudden realize, like, holy, holy, leave that at the blank, uh, explicative. Um, you know what? It doesn't fit within 132, and you have to go back to your client, Katia, and say it's taxable. Your client can be happy or unhappy. Right? So how would you rather approach this? With the hero mentality or the mentality that you may be the bearer of bad news? So you'd rather be the hero, I think. At least I'll speak for myself. Right, Nick? I'll, I'm trying to speak for you, but you know, maybe you, you want to be the bearer of bad news. Alright, so you get my message? The, the code, Code Section 61, and by extension, the regulations they are under, 61-21, says that all French benefits are subject to tax, right? They all represent accretions to wealth. But for policy reasons, Congress instituted Code Section 132, right? And Code Section 132 says there's many exceptions to that tax bill. And 132A, Right? Sets forth a laundry list of exceptions to taxability. But these self-explanatory? The answer is no, right? How do you know what is a no additional cost service, right? How do you know what is? Louis, Louis how would you know what is a no additional cost service? 132A1 says no additional cost service. Where would you look to find out what does that mean? In the code, where would you look in the code? That's uh, right. Where would you look, Yolanda? You gotta talk loudly because there's a lot of people behind you, and I'm only the one in front of you. I'm looking at the selective taxation. Yeah, but where in the codes? So 132A1 tells has no additional cost service, but it's hard to understand what that means, right? And that's up. Where would you look? Um, I have no idea because there's no other explanation. There's no, so it just sits naked in the, in the code? No, David? 132. 132B! Many times in the code, if they have special terms of art that aren't self explanatory, keep reading. Chances are there's going to be a definition. Right? And 132B defines what is no additional cost service, right? What is a generic, common, uh, no additional cost service? Luca? Uh, like if a uh, hotel gave their dorm in a room. Okay. Notice if you work for the hotel and they give you a free room, not taxable, right? Not Generally not taxable. Alicia. Tax preparation services? If you're working on tax preparation services. If you're using the software at work to do your tax. Yes, that would be no well, that may be de minimis for instance. There's, there's several others. Most you know, if you work for an airline and you get a free ticket, um, generally not taxable. If you work for New Jersey Transit, they allow you to ride on the trains for free, not taxable. Qualified employee discounts. Taxable or not, how many of you, have any of you in this room worked retail and got in the discount? So Nick, you raised your hand quickly. Where did you work? Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, if you don't know, we don't know. Crummy and Finch, back in the day. Fond memories? No. Uh, what was your discount? I don't know, I think it was 50%. 50%? 50. <coughs> nice. Anyone else work anywhere else? Go ahead. Yeah. No. Um, or Rollins, that's the Rollins outlet store. Which one? Rollins outlet in Pennsylvania. Okay, and what was your discount? 40%. 40, nice. 
Anything else? Anyone else want to share company secrets? Marshall's only 10%. Okay. David? Uh, Verizon gives us half off, and now I'm worried that you're paying tax on it. Well, <laughs> you're not out of luck yet. So it's up to 20%. It's 50 on the service. And they don't, they don't 1099, and your W-2, I should say, include the balance on 30? That is surprising, actually. It's discounted, huh? Um, I, I can't answer that, you know, usually you can get, now, let me just point out one second, I'm going to check myself on one point so I can just want to see. Um, Just to keep the numbers simple here, sells merchandise, and the cost of merchandise sold, say, is seven hundred thousand. Okay, and in other words, let me say that differently. Uh, the profit for every million dollars that the Gap sells of clothing, um, they command a profit of three hundred thousand dollars. Okay, what's the profit ratio? Thirty percent. Is in that case, Nick. If they give you up to a 30% discount as an employee, not taxable. If they give you a 40% discount, that 10% difference would be subject to tax. Yeah, 97, that's what I'm looking at. 897. Okay, they got it. So qualified employee discounts, generally not taxable, subject to these limitations. Again, this is the discount threshold before tax is imposed. So it really depends. Uh, if you look at the gross profit ratio, you have to see if the discount exceeds that gross profit ratio. Um, so that's, we have no additional cost service, qualified employee discounts, working condition fringe benefits. 132D. These are benefits, out-of-pocket expenses, that had the employee incurred these expenses would have been deductible by the employee. So working condition fringe benefits, if um, you're a rock and roll superstar and you get a bodyguard, okay, the expense of the bodyguard, deductible. Okay? Excuse me, let me rephrase that. It's not includable in income. Why? Even though that's a very valuable benefit to have a bodyguard, it's exempt under 132D because if you were paying for that yourself, it would be deducted. Okay? So if you work for a record company who gives you a bodyguard because you're on their record label. I have two questions. Alicia. One question. It says, it says here 132A, actually 3. 132A3, but remember, the detail is going in 132D. Look at 132D, explains in detail oh, okay. what is the working condition of fringe benefits. Okay. okay, thank you. De minimis fringe benefits. Most of you are familiar. Most of you, for example, at work might get coffee. Coffee, for those of us who buy it at Starbucks, does not come cheaply. But if your employer gives you that same cup, do you have to record that $2 or $3 latte in your income? 
And the answer is no, right? Why? Put section 132E. Do these benefits extend beyond just you as the employee? If these benefits, for example, are given to your spouse, given to your children, they are not employees. Are they taxable? Is the fair market value of these benefits taxable? Are they taxable? Um, in this case, Louise, taxable or not? Louis, taxable or not if, 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 if these benefits are given to your spouse or to your children? The set of you as an employee or the extent? They, they don't work for the company. They are not employees. And they, they get a free airline ticket. You are, are Sully, right? You're just going incognito tonight. <laughs> you as Sully, your wife goes on a trip. Gets a free trip to California worth $500. Tax or not? Yes. Do you agree, uh, Yolanda? Yes, she is not an employee. She is not an employee, but Larry, do you agree? Uh, I think it's not taxable because there is a definition for employee and then all the spouse and children are included. What's your authority? Um, I, I cannot find the one. 132 h right? Let's go, let's look at it together. Now it says for purposes of paragraph one and two. Retired and disabled employees and surviving spouse and employee treated as an employee. And 132H2 um, says that spouse and dependent children are also treated as employees. You want to see 132H, right? Opens the door for your spouse and children. And for retired and disabled. So will that go for any dependent? Adopted child, uh, any dependent? Any, any Give me exa examples, Nick. You taking your your niece because her parents died. No, that, I mean I have to read the definition, but. Um, I would have to check if the dependent child is defined. It means any child is defined in Code Section 152 F1. So I'd have to see if it meets the definition if your niece becomes a dependent of yours if they're living within the same household. So I can't, I, I, I'd have to do some research on that. Okay? Um, keep in mind, there are other fringe benefits, 132 F. As qualified transportation fringe benefits, 132F, your employer provides you with these qualified uh, a, a transit pass, parking, all these things to be exempt from tax. I'm just going to call to your attention, and this is important. Well, let me call one other French benefit. The authors call to your attention 132J4. Some of you on your business premises have athletic facilities. Some of you have athletic facilities. Instead of having to get a membership at Gold's Gym, you, you get free use of your gym at your employers, taxable or not. 132J4 says not taxable. Nice. Can these benefits be discriminatory? Where Ari, the highly compensated, get these benefits, Ari, and the rank and file don't? If, if they're discriminatory in nature, Ari, are they taxable to anyone, Ari? Uh, taxable to the IRS. And what's your authority for that? Uh, Zach? I remember reading it. The heart? Uh, 132J. 132J says that with respect to no additional cost services and to qualified employee discounts, if they're discriminatory, they will be taxable to the highly compensated. Okay, if they're discriminatory. Jackie, by extension, can other fringe benefits be discriminatory 
and not be taxable? Not sticking with you? Can can for example, some of you might be a partner at an accounting firm and you get free parking, but your secretaries have to pay. It's discriminatory. You get the free parking, they don't. Um, taxable Luke or not? Taxable. Taxable, you say. Nick, would that be right? I don't know, is that that you're Asking makes me think it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Diana? Um, I mean, it's kind of like giving you a discount. Well, it's giving you free parking. It's not a discount. It's a tax bond, but it is discriminatory, which bugs people, right? Diana, why are they highly compensated in getting this nice perk and those who are making less not? So it goes against her grain, but, say again, Karen? Well, uh, let's put it this way. The fact it's discriminatory, it, above 175, but that number is adjusted for inflation. Um, the fact it's discriminatory, let me just make the observation, does not make it tax. Okay, the 132J1 talks about no additional cost services and qualified employee discounts. It doesn't talk about uh, qualified tra um, um, transportation fringe benefits, right? So it can be discriminatory. And let's just take de minimis fringe benefits, right? The boss gets, you know, great Starbucks coffee and the rank and file get mud water, right? Very discriminatory, right? Does it make it taxable to the highly compensated who get you know, the, the, the special coffee? No. Right, everyone agree? So my point is, don't, you may be bothered from a, a political stance, like, oh, this is discriminatory, it should be tech, but don't let your, 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 your emotions take over. Certain benefits which are discriminatory are taxable, but only those that are specified that can't be discriminatory. Other benefits can be discriminatory, um, not taxable, Alicia. So it, the same applies for the employees, retired, disabled, and surviving. They only apply to one and two, A1 and two. This is what it says here. Yeah. It says for purposes of- H1 says it, it limits, says for, certain, for, for the discount purposes, uh, excuse me, you're, you're absolutely right that the extension of individuals treated as employees only extend for those discounts. So if you're if you get free parking and you're a spouse or a child, that would be taxable under Code Section 61 because you're not defined to be an employee. Thank you. All right. Now, um, Ashley. Right. I have one question. Um, going off the article that you sent the other day about how to draw a large gap.
look, there is, is there abuse out there? There's, there's, there's some abuse, so it's it's reality. Um, other questions? <coughs> Yeah, I gave you de minimis fringe benefits, for example. Parking. There's a lot of fringe benefits that can be discriminatory, right? And then nerve to the highly compensated does not make them taxable. Other fringe benefits which are discriminatory will be taxable. Because the code specifies they will be taxed. John? In the case of like Google and this like tech companies that provide not only like free coffee, but they actually have Cafeteria for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They have sleeping pots. They have yeah. chin. They have Massages. Things yeah. Like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Read my article. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 21st century benefits. There's a problem we'll draw on that we'll get to. Okay. It, it, it's in the 18th edition, not the 17th edition, because that is a trend out there. Okay. So uh, let's let's blow through these problems, guys, on page 101. Because I want to make sure we get through this. Consider whether and to what extent fringe benefits listed below may be excluded from gross income and where possible support your conclusion with statutory authority. Employee, the National Hotel of a National Hotel, hotel State chain, let's suppose Marriott, okay? Marriott Hotels. Um, stays in one of the chain's hotels in another town rent free while vacation. The hotel has several empty rooms. So uh, Trina and uh, Tina, taxable or not? Non taxable. Non taxable. Tina. Yeah. Tina, what's your authority? Uh, 132. Say it loudly. 132. 132B. Trina, you agree? Yes. Okay, 132B for the proposition that this is a pretty central example no additional cost service. Question B. Same as A, except the desk and clerk bounces paying gas so employee can stay rent free. Nick, you? Tax or not? Um, I would say it's taxable. So it's taxable, you? Say again? 
Larry was saying, you said it's not taxable. Larry said it's not taxable. Ashley, it says it's not taxable. Oh, yeah. It, it says that it's provided for This would qualify. And there's a regulation directly on point that a cash rebate does not disqualify. And again, the authors are very kind here. Your client will never come in with this tattooed on their forehead. Right? Question D. Same as A above, except that employees, spouse, and dependent children traveling without employee use the room on their vacation. Nice, right? You're working so hard, and there's your spouse and kids enjoying themselves, right? Living the vida loca. Okay? Tax or not, uh, Louise? Definitely what? Say again? The taxable? Jian Yin? You say non taxable. Look at this. Point counterpoint. So, Jeff? And if you say non-taxable, Jeff, why? Um, because the, uh, because the employees, spouse, and children. What's your authority? Uh, uh, 132H. 132H. Right? Please, they can live the Vida Loca. Okay? Question D. Okay. Um, oops, question E. Same as A, except the employee stays in the hotel of a rival chain under a written reciprocal agreement. So instead of staying at Marriott, you say it uh, days in. Okay? Okay? Say again? Non taxable. Non taxable. Uh, Anna. Say it loudly. Tax for or not? The discount. So instead of paying 500 a night, you pay 250. No, I thought non-taxable because there's an agreement between the hotels. Okay, what's your authority for that? Say it loudly. Also? Code section 132I. When it comes to no additional cost services, emphasis on the word services, Taxable or non taxable? Non taxable because of the authority of Code Section 132I. <coughs> Luke, you were going to say? Uh, regulation. Uh, you know what, Luke? You might be saying that we have a statute right on, spot on, and I, you know me, I love regulations, but if we have a code section, that's going to trump a treasury regulation. We have 132i. Say no more, right, Luke? Question F. Same as A, except that employee is an officer in a hotel chain, and rent-free use is provided only to officers at the chain, and all others have to pay 60% of their normal rent. Tax or not, uh, it's the person staying at the uh, Marriott. Hotel. So, James, you're going to say? Taxable. You say it's taxable? Evelina? Taxable, you agree or not? You say yes? Mm -hmm. Evelina. And what's your authority? Say it loudly? 61. And why doesn't 132 apply? Can you give me a code section? Zach, can you give me a code section? Uh, 132J. 132J, right? So, Evelyn is right, uh, but I just wanted to get the bridge, right, to the promised land, uh, code section 61, right? So, this would be taxable to the highly compensated. Question G. Hotel chain is owned by a conglomerate, which also owns a shipping line. The facts are the same as in A, except the employee works for the shipping line. It doesn't work for the hotel. And look at question H right below. Same as G, except the employee is a controller of the con conglomerate. 
So the person as a controller works for multiple lines, right? Facts more or not in question G. Annetta, and you'll land it. Facts more or not? Well, I'm asking question G. If you work for the shipping line, can you stay at the hotel for free? And not be taxed? No, because it's not an actual hotel. It's not an employee of the hotel. Well, you're an employee of this big enterprise that owns the shipping line and it owns the hotel. So you are employed by the same employer. But doesn't the, Nick, you were going to say? Two different, two different businesses. Well, the, the code uses you must be in the same line of business, right? Yeah. And if you're not in the same line, it doesn't qualify. So it would be taxable in the first question. Taxable under Code Section 61 because the no additional cost service does not apply because it's not in the same line. Okay? The second question, right, Larry? says, here's a person who has a leg in both businesses, right, Larry? Yep. Taxable or not? Not taxable. What's your authority? There's a direct, direct regulation of one. Yeah, the, the Treasury regulation directly on point. If you read that Treasury regulation, right, Ashley? You're going to read that regulation? I read that one. You read that one. And it says what, Ashley? It says that if you're in, since it's involved in, in the business line, the example was an accountant, how they are they're in all the lines. It's not taxable. They're in both lines, right? Simultaneously. And there you have authority directly on point. The statute is silent. Everyone agree? The statute is completely silent as this issue. And all we can say, right, Ashley, is thank God for the regulations because they shed light here, right? It's right there. The author cite you to it right there. Again, your clients are never going to be so nice. And no offense to me, I, I would not be so nice. David. Can two branches of one company have a reciprocity agreement with each other? That's what we're going to say. No, and it's got to be in the same line because that goes beyond. So it, the same, Code Section 132I is predicated it's going to be in the same line of business. The reciprocal agreement uh, has to be in the same okay. line. Question I. Employee sells insurance. And the employer insurance company, say Prudential, allows 20% off the $1,000 policy. So suppose annual premiums, instead of being a thousand or eight hundred. Okay, everyone has a visual. You work for anyone here? Work for Prudential? No one. No one. All right, that's okay. Nikisha, Jay, tax or not? Hi. Question I. Not taxable. Jay, agree or disagree? Okay? Not taxable. And Nikishi, do you have authority? Look on page 96 of the textbook. Look at footnote, or the text, and then the footnote associated with 35. Footnote 35. If you read the text, it says that purchase of, of life insurance is deemed equivalent to the rendering of services. And there's a case on point. So the legislative history in the case suggests that this would be a qualified employee discount related to services, right? Would I know that? Yeah. But here the authors say, if you did research, you would find legislative history in the case supported with the notion that Life insurance is in the nature of a service, right? So the answer there is exempt from tax. Is a qualified employee discount. Employee is a salesman in a home furnishing store. So let's say Home Depot. Home Depot. The prior year, the store had a million dollars of sales and six hundred thousand dollars worth of cost of goods sold. Employee buys a two thousand dollar sofa. Um, from the employer for a thousand dollars. Okay, we're going to get the visual. Um, okay, in this particular instance, Jesse, Ari, 
what's taxable, if any? So give me a number that you would say is taxable. Say again? 25 percent. Hold on, Jesse, I'm going to repeat. Give me a number of what's taxable. I didn't ask for a percent. Do you have a dollar number? All right, do you have a dollar number? Don't use the word maybe. I'm a paying client. I don't want to hear a maybe. Um, hold on. Let me just, uh, James? You say zero, Evelina? All right, let me, let me just, Jessica, I, I think. Say it loudly. 200. Joanna? Joan? 200. Alicia? 200. Anyone have a different answer? David, you have? Zero. You have zero. Joan, how do you get 200? Okay, how did you get 40%? Uh, a million minus 600. Okay, everyone get the visual. No, okay. They sell a million dollars worth of goods, and it costs 600, right? So the profit here is a million less 600, right? So the numerator is 400,000, right? The denominator is the cost, uh, uh, the, the, the retail sales, I should say, the, the sales. So, that's 400,000 over a million. The gross profit ratio here is 40%, right? So if you buy something that's selling for 2,000 and your employer allows you to buy it for 1,200, any income? No. But here, it's going beyond a 40% discount. How much is the discount? 50%. 50%. Ah, that 10% difference is not sheltered from tax, right? So here, that 10% would be subject to tax under Code Section 61 because Code Section 132C gives a maximum disc. Look, your employer can do whatever. Your employer can give you a larger discount. Okay, they're at liberty. To, it's at liberty to do so. But the tax consequences stem from the code, not what your employer does. Jeff, you agree? You see that? Yeah. All right. David, you got that? You win this round. I win this round. Okay. Believe me, at home I lose a lot. <laughs> All right, everyone agree. $200 taxable. Mm -hmm. um, question K. Employee attends a business convention in another town. Employer picks up employee's costs, okay? So is the cost of the convention includable in income, Diana? Yeah. What? No. No? Pasto, agree? I agree. Why? What's your authority? Uh, 132E. 132E? Diana, agree? Say again, Anetta? Or Yolanda? 132F. 132F, why F? I would find a Well, but this is a convention, guys. It's certainly not de minimis. It's the Dutch. It's D. Say again, Alicia? I would say it's D under. Yeah, it's a working condition French benefit, right? That had the employee paid him or herself would have been deductible as a Code Section 162 expense. This qualifies under 132D. 132D. Alicia. Because originally the store makes only 40%. No, that it, it, well, it, that's its gross profit ratio. Keep going. And then with the sell to employee, the, the gross profit ratio there is 50%. It's right. more than their original one. So why? When you say it's more than, that, that's just what the employer is willing to give as a discount. They could give a 60% discount. Mm -hmm. They're one is a fact they can't change how much money they make. From, from selling items. Mm -hmm. Another is they're at liberty to give whatever discount they want to their employees. So, but I said that, what was the limit then? There's no. Or we 
the first 40% is tax free. Anything above that discount will be taxable. Read code section 132 C. Question K, guys, not includable. Working condition fridge. Question um, L. Employer has a bar, provides employees with happy hour cocktails. Okay, everyone has a visual Larry, a uh, Wes, I should say. Wes. Katia, tax or not? Uh, non taxable. The minimum. The minimum, right, Wes? Right, Katia? Yeah. Employee, any scotch drinkers out there? If your employer gives you a case of scotch, Nick quickly raised his hand. You love it. <laughs> Blue label, black label? Uh, I'll drink black label because I don't have a ton of money, but I love blue label. There's one better. Uh, Johnny Walker Odyssey, but it's a thousand dollars box. <laughs> what is it called? Johnny Walker Odyssey. Odyssey? I've had, what? I've had it. It's like $50 less, a thousand dollars box. Awesome. All right, tax for a nothing. Is this a black label? And, and I know what Nick's going to say inappropriately so. It depends on what case he's getting, right? Some, if you read the regulation, you know, if it's not an expensive uh, um, case of scotch, not taxable. If it's the, Nick, did I say this? It's the Odyssey case? Johnny Wilbur Odyssey, yeah. All right, well, don't worry. I'm not picking anyone up, up tonight. Um, all right, maybe at the end of class, Nick will share a class. Okay, at the end, end of the semester. All right. Um, all right. Can I just chip in my crazy thing? Sorry, I said that. All right, bottom line is no clear answer to this, right guys? Really depends on the nature of the case. So again, my goal in life is not to make your life uh, challenging and give you uh, notes that are equivocal. It's just a reality check. Uh, David. Is de minimis relative to your income or just an empirical number? There's no threshold number, it's a gut, right? It's a gut that a jury would have to decide. Is this de minimis? So if you're getting $10,000, $10, in fact, you're a hedge fund manager. That's going to be taxable. I don't care if you make $10 billion, you can't say, oh, 10000 is nothing to me. It's a spit in the bucket. Okay? No, it's not relative based on your salary. Uh, I don't think the general public would like that. <laughs> uh, question N. Employees an officer or corporation pays employees parking one block away from corporate headquarters. Not officers have to pay their own. Uh, we all know the drill. We all have seen this before. So, Johnny, tax for or not? What's your authority? You don't have the authority, Karen? 132F, right? Are you going to say that? I would look for 162. Why? We're talking about inclusion issues, not deduction issues. Yeah, that's a deductible issue. Yeah, 162, it would not be deductible under 162, just for the record. Okay, look at two, code section 262 instead. Um, so the fact is discriminatory doesn't matter. Okay, the fact is discriminatory. And I believe Karen stated it before. There's a threshold. Only the first $175 is exempt from tax. By the way, a little factoid to make your Monday night. How much do you think it costs in Washington, D.C. to park your car approximately monthly? 175. $175. And if you're a congressman or woman, what do you want to exempt from tax? The Wall Street Journal ran a piece about this, about that issue. All right, not surprising. Uh, employer provides employee with $185 worth of vouchers each month for commuting on mass transportation. Anything taxable or not, Nick? Uh, yeah, 120 would be taxable for the whole year because only the first 175 of the transit passes are not taxable. Anything above it, the cost of anything above it, would be subject to tax. So here, a $10 difference would be subject to tax. Once again, looking at Code Section 132F. Question P. Employer puts a gym um, at the business facilities for use employees and their families, um, taxable or not? No, no, no. Non-taxable. If you say non-taxable, what's your authority for that proposition? 
132 J4, right? Everyone see that? 132 J4? Okay. Not taxable. All right. Now, let me just take the last three or four minutes and talk to you about some things here that want to cause your attention. Um, meals and lodging. We're going to get a taste of this. Um, we have this Herbert Head case. Um, happy commission. Are meals and lodging furnished by your employer generally taxable or not, Kavya? Meals and lodging furnished by your employer generally taxable or not? Non taxable, what's your authority? Do you want to be a hero or do you want to be a bearer of bad news? Generally, you want to say it's taxable, right? Counting it, you want to start with Code Section 61. Everyone agree? Yeah. Then we could, maybe if it applies, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Maybe Code Section 119 will say it's not subject to tax. Agree? Right? But let's be careful and circumspect before we jump to conclusions. Now, it's going to be easy for us to finish Chapter 4. We are not, emphasis on the word, we are not delving into Chapter 5. We know, don't we, that generally awards are taxable, right? Code Section 74, generally awards are taxable. Um, we don't need to look at it. We will look at, we will go immediately to Chapter 6, okay? The next class we're going to um, go immediately to Chapter 6. Now, Chapter 6 is important because it deals with sales and exchanges, which are going to routinely come up in your practice. And you're going to have to add another important code section to your ever-growing repertoire of code sections, right? Very important. Just like code section 61 is at the pinnacle of code sections, um, Stephanie, Brandon, Alicia, what code section are we going to add to our repertoire? Code section 1001. It's in one of those at the pantheon of code sections, okay? Very important. You guys have to know that inside and out. Um, we're going to flow through chapter 6. I don't see there being a problem. I, I, I hope we finish uh, chapter 6 um, next class. And then, if you want, just keep in mind our syllabus. And no, you may think I lost my mind. No, at least I don't think I did. Uh, chapter 21, we're going to jump ahead because once we compute the amount of the gain or loss, uh, we want to know what the character of that gain or loss is. Is it capital gain, ordinary income, recapture income? So we're going to jump to chapter 21. Fear not. Been there, done this a lot. It works. Um, so if you can read a few pages into chapter 21 for next class, go for it. Okay? So uh, everyone have a great Monday night.